with the latest on the Red Raiders at the big tournament. This is Red Raider Nation's Quest for the Championship, sponsored by Red Raider Outfitter. Well, sometimes the longest of long shots brings the biggest payoff, and for Texas Tech fans, it's a team pick to finish seventh in its own league earning a trip to its first Final Four. Hi, everybody. I'm Brian Mudd. He's Red Raider Nation Sports Director David Collier, and we're lucky to get you here for, oh, for a second, for yeah. at least <laughs> one night here. You've been all the tournament games mm -hmm. so far for Texas Tech and watched everything happen up close. We all cheered for it from here. Mm -hmm. What was it like in the building with that team? I'll tell you what, uh, you know, we're running around doing a lot of stuff, but I got to be there for the most important part, the final seconds. I got to see the block by Tariq, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of helped ice everything, the, the – uh, Technical foul when Matt Mooney got, and you knew that Davide was going to hit the free throws right. there, and pretty much cinched the thing. And to see the corner that they let the media in that wasn't already out there was right there with the Red Raider fans. And to see them go crazy, and that just that moment. I mean, you, clearly, I didn't go to Texas Tech. I've covered them forever. It was an awesome moment, and it's one of those that nobody will ever forget. Amazing experience for for the kids, you know, as well. Nah. We saw them in the locker room afterwards in the usual dances, but it looked like any other game. Mm -hmm. We've seen that a lot from this team this year. Very close. Here's what we do next. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they kind of said, we'll, we'll enjoy this. And you could tell that there was a little more excitement and they enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I kind of liken this one to when they made it to the Elite Eight mm -hmm. last year in Boston. There was, a, there was a little celebration there because they had made school history. You know, they, not like they weren't ready to play Villanova. Clearly, they, they were playing the eventual national champions, right. and that was a great team. When they won the Elite Eight game, against Michigan, they walked in that locker room like it was just they had just beat UT Rio Grande Valley <laughs> and they were back to business immediately. There was some celebration and rightfully so. I mean, you're making history right now, but I have no doubt about it by the time they walked past all those students in that sea of students on the welcome home at 2.30 in the morning, they had already watched video. Oh, yeah. They were already preparing. Mark Adams was sitting, he was going from seat to seat in the plane telling everybody about so and so and this and this and that already planned that seed and they were already looking ahead. He may be the secret weapon out yeah. of all this deal. We're going to talk about that as the week goes on. Let's talk about a little bit what we're doing here right now. And this is going to be important for you. We're going to be here throughout the rest of the week, every night, 645 Central Time, while Texas Tech remains in the big tournament. And we'll be right here on this site that you're watching now with the day's latest news and information and fun with reports originating from here in Lubbock and in Minneapolis as the Final Four party moves there later on this week. Right now, here's a look at the headlines today brought to you by our friends over at Red Raider Outfitter. And there's a lot to talk about here over the last few days as well. Tech sophomore guard Jarrett Culver named a second team All-American Tuesday by the Associated Press. Culver's averaging 18 and a half points, six rebounds per game so far this season. Wednesday morning, get up early, be at United Supermarkets Arena for a special send-off to get the team on its way to Minneapolis and Saturday's game with Michigan State, but you got to be there by 7.15 a.m. for that. And word from practice so far this week is that the team has been loose and comfortable in its preparation for the Spartans. Easy to see when Coach Beard took a different seat from Monday's news conference. This is uh, Chris Beard with Juco Junction. I mean, how, how much do you stretch a day? It's a great question. I uh, actually did hot yoga this morning, and I stretched for about an hour and 15 minutes. And uh, so I, I stretch a lot. Who's going to follow that up? It's funny, man. Uh, have you ever had anybody walk out on you mid-question with that? I didn't know who to look. Usually I look at the person asking the question and <laughs> left the room. Coach Beard, yeah, dropped the mic and walked out. Yeah, uh, that, that, that just shows you how loose this group is. We were just talking about it there. That definitely loosened the, those guys up when we were talking to him. But he asked one of each person, and I, there must be some form of inside joke. And I think a lot of them have fun at the expense of Matt Moody and maybe his quirkiness. I mean, he did say right. he was doing hot yoga because they all they got got it more of a kick out of it than he did. He was kind of a. Uh, Taken aback. I, as, as you, I couldn't imagine a coach just walking out in the middle of a question. It's probably happened to me before. Uh, names will, 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 will not. You can probably those guess which one. <laughs> um, but, you know, this, this is the, 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 the problem now for any coach mm -hmm. of, of the, these four teams is trying to keep everything as normal as possible, mm -hmm. schedule wise. Uh, and the practices you have here and the practices you have in Minneapolis. Yeah, and a good point to that, that what you guys will probably get in before I get to the schedule is remember, three of these teams are there 
for the first time That's with true. these head coaches. So these groups really don't know anything. I'm sure Tom Izzo will be able to handle that situation a little bit better since he basically lives at the Final Four. But as far as the Red Raiders and their schedule, uh, just yesterday CBS had a crew here and they were interviewing players. So they were going through that before they even did the practice. Mm -hmm. And once they get up there tomorrow, I'm sure they'll have a workout at a local high school. And then on on uh, Thursday, then, then the fun begins inside of U.S. Bank Stadium there on Thursday. They'll meet with the media from 1-10 until 2-10. That'll be the players first, followed by head coach Chris Beard with his press conference where he'll talk about whatever uh, food that I guess he's eating on his way up there and throughout the week there in uh, Minneapolis. After that, we've got Michigan State taking their turn from 2-15 to about 2 or 3-25. Tom Izzo will wrap things up on that side of the bracket. The other coaches will take their turns as well. We'll worry about those other ones, like Coach Beard will say, uh, whenever it comes to that. But uh, mm -hmm. then later in the day, we have the announcement of AP Player of the Year. We probably know who that's going to be, Zion Williamson. Sure. Coach of the Year, that's you would assume thing. that would be some more time that Chris Beard is away from his coaching or his team and his coaching staff from 435 to 450 as a press conference for AP Coach of the Year. Is, is, against, that, is that pretty much a done deal at this point? You would think so, but I mean, man, I, I don't see how you can compare any of the guys that are currently finalists with him to what Chris Beard has done, replacing all of the seniors he did, losing Zaire Smith, and basically he has a brand new basketball team. Mm -hmm. He was picked, we know the whole story, picked to finish seventh in the conference. He's one of the final four teams in the country. I don't know who has a better resume than Chris Beard going into this thing. After that, though, when he gets that award, when he should get that award anyway. Friday, it's back to it again. You've got more media availabilities. Then you have the open practice in the gym there. And you say gym. Yeah, that's the weird part about this. You, you get 50 minutes in there for the, the open practice. I don't know how long that they have for their closed practice, but mm -hmm. they have to utilize every single second of this because, again, they're playing in a football stadium. Yeah, that's and this football stadium is different than most football stadiums because it's glass everywhere. And uh, I've seen a story where basically they had to put drapes up everywhere, which they do in football stadiums, but this is different. It's not like in the Edward Jones Dome, which is closed anyway. You got light coming in. It's a completely different situation. You've got that open air. It's a different feel for shooters, and it's something that each one of these shooters are going to have to utilize, as Coach Beard mentioned yesterday when we were talking to him, every single shot that they take during those practice se sessions. You know, they give you some practice time. I think we get a practice in there on Thursday. Used to, they wouldn't let the teams practice on Thursday. And I think they want offense to go up, in my opinion, so they let you practice in there a little bit. And then Friday, we'll have the open practice, which is a big time part of the Final Four. Coaches grow up going to it, myself included, and that'll be cool. Um, but, but I think you just try to get your guys as many shots as you can in the time they give you, because it is a different experience. You know, the great thing is maybe the loudest fans in the tournament so far have been the players' families. We've seen Davide Moretti mm -hmm. and Brandon Francis have family and recently from out of the country. And that kind of support when things are this tense is really is beyond important. Oh, oh, without a doubt, for players like Lovacone, Jared Culver, you know, family has been the glue that kept him focused on basket, this basketball dream that, uh, man, it's it's quite a dream. And Tori Larned caught up with Jared's family about the journey as basketball parents. He's always dreamed about playing in March Madness and going to the Final Four, and now he gets that opportunity. Growing up, when Lubbock native Jared Culver wasn't sitting in church building his faith. Jared usually sits right here next to me. And listening to his dad preach. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. You could find him on the basketball court. Well, when we would play basketball as a family, we would go outside. It would be me and Trey against JJ and Jared, the two oldest against the two young ones. Christmas, and they played all day Christmas, all night Christmas night. It was cold, and they just did not want to come in the house. Regina Huatha Culver Jr. say it was always about supporting their kids as they fought for their dreams. It's a lot that goes behind closed doors that people don't see, you know, the tears, the sweat. You know. Now, as the national spotlight shines on the Red Raiders, Culver can still see his family on the sidelines. Uh, knowing that their family is there is so important. To have family there that really have gone through the struggle, known what you've had to do to get to where you are. As the team chaplain, Hiawatha even gives the team some pregame prayers. Anything to encourage them about life, it really has nothing to do with basketball, it's just life. So when the players, the coaches, and the team step on the court, they know. You didn't get this far by not believing. Tori Larned. KMAC News. What an amazing family. This amazing guy yeah. right down here in the end. <laughs> Former Texas Tech basketball operations director, Craig Wells, 
sitting in with us today. Good to have you in. Is this a fun time or what? I, can I you mean, believe just, that we're sitting here talking about this? It just doesn't get any better. And congratulations to Coach Beard, the players, his staff, the athletic department. I'm telling you, it's, it's a great time to be a Red Raider. Is there a more perfect guy to try to keep we mentioned try to keep every, everyone's head in the right place. Is there a better coach in the country oh. to try to do this? How is he going to do this? All you got to do is go to a practice and you'll see how keen he is on details. Mm -hmm. Everything is scripted. I mean, he knows what he wants to accomplish each and every practice. He'll do the same thing for this tournament. He'll have those kids, one, to enjoy the experience. Two, he'll make them understand what they're accomplished so far and what's in front of them and three he'll have them ready for tip off Saturday night I promise you he'll have them ready and you've, you've been out to practices and this is something that I noticed and I know that the workouts that they have at these regionals aren't really practices but the the stuff that they do kind of lets you know what they're about and some of these teams that they've already beaten they're out there shooting threes and that's what their whole practice is You've been to these practices. They're very defense oriented. They're they're doing uh, charge drills during the open practices. They're mm -hmm. doing blockout drills. We don't get to see three point shooting drills when it's a Texas Tech practice. I'm he, imagining it's like that in the whole. And practice David, well. he he's doing that the last two weeks of the season. It's not. I mean, he starts off doing that. That's that's fundamental basketball to him. That's part of his everyday routine. And those practices at a Final Four, he'll do those open practices until it, but when he goes to that high school and has a practice, and believe it or not, a walk through in the hotel on a carpeted floor, mm -hmm. I promise you, he'll accomplish a lot. And when they have game time, they will have been where they needed to be. Mm -hmm. You've been a coach for, for many, many years in one form or another in and around the game of basketball. We've talked a lot about how you know, he's replaced all these players with five of the top eight scorers mm -hmm. on, the, on the team gone, which is why they earned that uh, you know, seventh place projected finish yeah. at the start of the season. Can you talk about what it is to do a complete overhaul of a starting lineup like that and then still be able to be successful? Well, first of all, there's nobody any better at it and the proof's in the pudding than Coach Beard. Second, and I heard him talk about this, it's no different than the way he experienced a junior college mm -hmm. job, mm -hmm. you know, where they go after one or two years and you start all over again. Mm -hmm. What you're looking for, you're looking for talent when you go recruit at that D1 level, but you're also looking for a fit. A kid that comes in, and like he talked about uh, Mooney, Matt Mooney, he wanted to win. That was his priority. And that's what you look for. And it's, it's very, you know, hard to take those four or five positions and fill them in with somebody is not as good. Keenan Evans was terrific, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, but it took two or three to take Keenan Evans' place, not just one, not just, you know, and he, he found out I've got somebody that makes that fit, makes it work, and that's what Chris Beard does so well. And Coach of the Year honors for those kind of things. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. what he's done. He's, he's pieced and molded together a team. He doesn't have great individual players. He's got a team. How much of what he's done, and I know this is, goes to John Riley and all the offseason work, but Davide Moretti oh. <laughs> uh, should get a little more credit, and he has. I mean, he's yeah. made it to, on all conference teams and everything. From what he was a year ago, how, how, does, how does that transformation happen? I know he was a professional in, the, in Italy. At let, me, uh, let me just tell you, uh, give you an example of how that happens. Chris said that they came back uh, 2.30, what, Saturday night, mm -hmm. Sunday morning. Sunday afternoon, on their own, on an off day, they're in the gym putting up mm -hmm. shots. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. Yeah. That's the difference between somebody that's really good and somebody that's great at their craft. Those kids really want to do what they have to do to make themselves better as individuals, and they know if they're better as an individual, that team's going to be better. In the weight room, I've seen Twitter video, Norin Sodiasi, on Sunday afternoon, he's back in there in that weight room getting after it. Mm -hmm. And that starts with Coach Riley, John Riley. It starts with Coach Beard, Coach Adams, Coach Berg, Coach Cyprian. Those coaches have instilled the work ethic into those players, and it is paying off because they are in the Final Four. Director of Operations, when you were there, you had a lot of uh, different types of job duties. Talk about just getting the people together and, and the differences between this trip and just just a random trip down to Waco for a weekend, 
this is harder on the players and harder on the coaches to keep everything in sort of a normal mode. You'll try to keep it as normal as you can, but you can't. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some things that are just not the same. You're going to have probably family on the plane that you don't normally have on those planes. Sometimes they take as few as 30 people on a plane or 35. You know, you're liable to have 100, you know, mm -hmm. and you take families. That's out of the ordinary. When you get there, you've, David alluded to it so eloquently, you've got media responsibilities. The Big 12 tournament kind of gives you a taste of that, yeah. but it's on, you know, it's way beyond that. I mean, and it, they'll be out of their norm, but Coach Beard is so good about letting those kids experience things, but pulling back the reins and saying, look, we've got a job here, let's get it done. And he is terrific at it, and as all those coaches are. And they, uh, but there's a lot of logistics going to it. And you're right. There's a lot of things that make you go this way or that way. But I promise you, Coach Beard, the detailed coach that he is, and the teacher that he is, he'll have him. He'll have it going in the right direction. We sure appreciate the insight. Yeah. Thank you. And Craig, I go Raiders. I mean, uh, it's it's going to be fun to watch. He's been there. Craig Wells, good to see you. Thank you, guys. Hey, Thanks. by the way, if you're looking for the latest Final Four information for Texas Tech and all the teams that are going to Minneapolis this week, you can log on to the website for your local Next Star affiliation station. And here in Lubbock, that's everythinglubbock.com. You can click on the link for the big tournament. You can see Craig Wells talking yeah. right there on the, on the internet. <laughs> Everything you need to amaze your friends before the games start on Saturday, including a link to this show and all of our shows that we're going to do this week, so you can watch them over and over again because I know you're going to want to. <laughs> hey, let's face it, there have not been a lot of fans who planned ahead no. for the Final Four. First Nothing time. wrong with that. No. So a one-week turnaround to figure out a way to get to Minneapolis has been tough, but a lot of Red Raiders are going to make that trip. Yeah, including some of the students. Came back Paige Peroso here to tell us what the student group Raider Riot, we all know who they are now, mm -hmm. what they're planning and how they're helping other students to get there to Minneapolis. You know them and you love them, and you've definitely heard them. <laughs> Yep, we're talking about Raider Riot, the student-run group cheering on the men's basketball team all season. Once just hype men, now turned event planners. It's been a hard week. It's been rough. I've I've had you know serious trouble. I've been real stressed. I've been you know I want kids to go to this game. I want all of us at this game. Wes is helping organize carpools, places to stay, and even helping fundraise for gas money. We need Chris Beard needs us. All the team needs us. This whole university needs us. We need this moment. This is a very needed moment. This is a breaking point, a turning stone in our city's history. 17 hours, 600 student tickets from tech, and nearly 1,200 miles of driving. But they say nothing will stop them from being there. Honestly, it was about precisely the moment when I knew I was going was when Davide hit that second three. And we all know college students don't have much cash lying around. I had to take my mom's credit card without asking her. Sorry, Mom. So if you'd like to donate to the cause, you can Venmo the group donations at Raider Riot. And the money collected will be used to make sure students get to the game. Paige Peroso, KMAC News. I bet some fans will actually help those kids get up there. Yeah, and Mark Adams won't, apparently, just to, just to let you know. <laughs> okay. Mark Adams has done enough, apparently. Uh, it, I would say so. Yeah. Chris yeah. needs the BP Operations yeah. Tech Alumni Association. You know a lot here in the last few days about trying to get people to Minneapolis. Am I correct? Yeah, if you can imagine, this is like doing the uh, the Rose Bowl three weeks in a row with two days' notice. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, it's, it's been really ridiculous. And when I found out, we were, you know, I was listening to the game on an airplane. Yeah. Uh, and I let out a, a nice audible yell on the airplane when we, <laughs> sure, when we won the game. Sure, we appreciated that, yeah. too. Yeah. But then when I landed, I literally had over 100 texts, uh, can you help me get tickets? And so I wanted to put on my Facebook page, yes, one, Reckham Tech, two, I can't help you get tickets to the game. Right, so. <laughs> you got to do that yourself. <laughs> well, tell me, tell me about, about though, the, the, the folks who did go through all this and what was the process of getting people tickets and, and doing all going through that and well obviously hurt. the uh, the university had their priority system and, and those mm -hmm. folks are, are going to get their tickets but most people are getting theirs through uh, the uh, the secondary ticket market um, in fact that's where I'm getting my tickets from so yeah. uh, because the university only gets so many tickets mm -hmm. in there and, and they've done a great job of prioritizing those season ticket holders that have been with them the entire year um, and, and getting them their tickets that, for the priority for the showing that loyalty that they had all year long. But for the most part, most people are getting theirs through the secondary market. And, uh, and the ticket prices aren't as bad as you would think. Uh, the harder game to get is actually the, uh, the semifinal day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, uh, when we get to the, the Monday game, it'll be a lot easier to find tickets. So the next question, I guess, is once everybody gets up there, how's the planning for 
uh, pregame parties and whatnot. That's a little bit of a, a different animal. Um, and when you get to the Final Four, as if many things are, they're locked down by the NCAA, mm -hmm. and so there's a there's a process you have to go through, and, and we're still going through that process. And uh, a lot of fans have been asking us uh, and the Red Raider Club about uh, the events. Uh, sit tight, the events are coming. <laughs> um, and we will let you know as soon as we get all the final confirmation and everything. Uh, it will be a, uh, a, uh, a, a cost per head, uh, mm -hmm. but there will be, it'll be a turnkey event for fans to go to. Uh, they'll be able to, uh, food and beverage uh, will be there. After, it'll be included in the cost of getting into the event. So um, we'll know that as soon as we know that. <laughs> and <I don't> know. <laughs> yeah, um, and yeah. once we know that, we'll uh, watch your social media, the, the Red Raider Club social media page, the, Red, uh, the Alumni Association social media page, Twitter accounts, uh, Facebook pages, all those things will have the event uh, information. Uh, we, will, we are uh, setting up a Game Day Central email that will mm -hmm. go out specifically, specifically for the Final Four, and it will have all of the events. So um, there will be a pregame event. Uh, for fans that are going, uh, a number of fans are going to uh, to the uh, to the game without tickets and no plans to buy tickets. You just want to go be a part, yeah. and they want to go, and they've asked yeah. us where the Red Raiders going to get together. Uh, that uh, that information will also be in mm -hmm. our game day central. So watch your social media for that as well. Um, that we we have secured a place in uh, in downtown uh, Minneapolis, right around the corner from the uh, from the arena. I Very shouldn't cool. say, not the arena, the stadium. stadium. <laughs> stadium. Yeah, <isn't laughs> the stadium. Yeah. yeah, people have to be prepared to that, too. This is not a small basketball arena. No, this, this, will, be a, this will be a big event, a uh, big venue. And uh, so we'll have a game-watching location in downtown Minneapolis, and that same place will be the, uh, a post-game gathering spot for, for Red Raider fans. I can say this. Uh, the uh, Red Raider Club, I think, event that was at the team hotel, very lively. Uh, yes. It was, it was fun to be had, and I was invited back afterwards if they won. Clearly, they won. I'm guessing they had a good time. I was, yeah. I was busy working. Always has to work. <laughs> Always has to work. Someone's got to get it on yeah, the air, right? Exactly, right. Yeah. Yeah. But you, it, it, and you guys do this all the time. I mean, for all sorts of events, not, not yeah. always to this scale. College but, World Series, yeah. uh, bowl games, you know, I mean, uh, obviously, you know, we, did, we had something in the last bowl game. We were in the Birmingham Bowl. It was a smaller event, but we, we had the event. And uh, we, are, are, we strive to have an event for every major postseason event. Like Are there this. alumni associations in that part of the country? In, in that we have a Minnesota? group of Red Raiders up there. They're okay. not a chapter, but they're a group of Red Raiders. They're more of, a, of an affinity group, mm -hmm. uh, and they get together, and they actually reached out to us and gave us the location that we're going to use for our, our event. I don't know if she was part of it, but former Lady Raider Crystal Bowles. Uh, she is part of that so group. <laughs> she, and her husband, John Cleary, who was a former mm -hmm. assistant golf coach mm -hmm. here in Tech. Yep. So uh, they are uh, they are part of that group. Shane Wright, yep. another former Red Raider oh, up in saw Minneapolis. Saw Shane Wright at the, the College yeah. World Series. So uh, yeah, we've got a lot of Red Raiders up there in that area, and they're excited that uh, that that their team is finally coming to them. <laughs> and uh, now we're going to they're going to make a great host for us when we come up to Minneapolis this weekend. Good deal, Christine. Good luck. Absolutely. Yeah, safe travels. I, and I'm I'm pleased. I, you know, let's get to Monday. But I'm glad that we don't have to do this again for another week. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're not alone there, my friend. There you go. <laughs> this has been. This has been an yeah. exercise. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Well, well worth it, though. Absolutely. Rec Tech. Uh, we're just excited to have all this happen uh, to Red Raider fans and long deserving for, for uh, everything that they've done uh, over the last few years. So that's big stuff. All right. So we mentioned we're off to Minneapolis tomorrow. David will not be here. We will be here about the same time. Here's a look at what's coming up Wednesday on the Quest for the Championship webcast. And it's these guys. A closer look at the bad guys in this story Michigan State Spartans. Bad thing for Tech is that the bad guys have been very good for a long time. And they're feeling good after knocking off Duke last weekend. We'll have an inside look at the mountain that Texas Tech will have to climb on Saturday night. Also tomorrow, Raiderland's Ryan Hyatt joins uh, David to talk more about the Chris Beard effect on the program, reaching his final four goals in just three short years. A look at how he's done it, how he can keep Texas Tech in the mix for years to come, and what the university's probably going to have to do to keep him here tomorrow night at the same time and same site. When will, we st when will we start hearing from you in Minneapolis? Uh, I think that would be tomorrow night, I think at 10 o'clock. We will, we will give you something. We'll probably just go get uh, our feet on the ground, figure out where we're at, mm -hmm. and maybe eat a hamburger and tell you how good it is, something like that. It'll yeah. be a little more in-depth, but the Juicy Lucy is what I hear. Hamburger with cheese in it. Minneapolis staple. We'll hear about that and more coming up with him. <laughs> here coming up for David Collier to cast the thousands behind the scenes that bring this to you. I'm Brian Miller. We'll see you tomorrow night right here, 645 Central on this Next Star family website for more on Texas Tech's Quest for the Championship.